Hello, my name is Melvin and thank you for watching. And this is part two of my backstory. If you haven't watched part one, please go ahead and uh, uh, click on the link below. Yeah, and uh, that will take you to part one. So the part two of my backstory, it's fast forward uh, 14 years later, very successful six-figure trading and consulting firm. Uh, but one of the things that I soon realized was that, you know, with that business model, I was constrained. I was facing two key constraints. Constraint number one was in order to scale, um, I was faced with the limit of time. The, now, the reason is because, you know, I've established such a reputation whereby when people say that they want to work with my firm, I, in actual fact, what they're saying is that they want to work with me. And so, you know, it became it became difficult for me to kind of uh, at least another person or a you know an associate and to say that okay get my associate to work with uh, the schools because uh, they were not very uh, interested in working with my associates they want to work with me and so I was constrained by time because uh, you know in a day there's just so many billable hours and uh, there's just so many hours I can't be with the school so and I can't be at two places at the same time so I was constrained by time in, 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 in one, at one end of uh, one of the constraints. The other constraint I was facing was really about location uh, because the key thing was that I kind of um, did, did this but I didn't know. But what happened was that because I'm only working with schools in Singapore, you know, I was kind of, the, you know, restricted myself to one location. So in order for me to go, you know, global or even regional, that will, that will entail a, a serious expansion and serious uh, need for other resources, which I, at that point in time, I didn't have. Um, so we tried various models, we tried working with people outside of Singapore, we tried talking to people, but all that didn't work out. So what happened was that, you know, because of these two constraints, I, I then decided to rethink the business model. But because business was so good, um, and that, you know, I even have problem trying to fit everybody into my schedule, what happened was that very quickly, you know, I was just working, 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 and before you know it, you know, um, I realized that I've turned 40. Uh, and what's, what to add, to add to that was that uh, by the time in 2013, um, you know, I became a dad a second time. And, you know, the thing is that once you become a parent, uh, your perspective about life changes. Um, and so, you know, things that were once what I worked towards, you know, they became um, not important anymore. So, for example, you know, having, having the best tools, having the latest gadgets used to be something that I worked towards or something that I look forward to. But after becoming a dad the second time, you know, those things became irrelevant or not important. Other things were more important. Uh, and I guess the main thing that really triggered it was that within 2013, after my daughter was born, um, that year I decided to quit smoking. Now, bear in mind that I have been smoking for more than 20 years, so quitting smoking was a big deal. Um, and, uh, and so I tried many times, but it didn't work. And finally in 2013, you know, I said, it's enough is enough and I'm going to quit smoking. And so that's why I did. I quit smoking in 2013. And so when in 2013 I quit smoking, um, what happened was uh, towards the end of 2013, uh, I have an incident whereby I suffered what we call a shortness of breath. Um, plus, uh, to add to that, I had chest pain and also I feel that there were numbness in my arm. And so with all these signs, I decided, I told my wife that, hey, I, I, I don't want to risk it. I, I think I want to go to, to the hospital for a checkup. And I went to the hospital and when I told them these symptoms, the doctors immediately put me under observation for the next eight hours because they suspected that I could have suffered a mild heart attack and they want to determine whether there was any damage done to my heart. And so with that, I was lying on the hospital bed with all these people who are seriously sick next to me and I was thinking, boy, what if I never get out? 
after this, what if something happens? You know, I went into that, into that infinite loop and played through a series of negative and worst case scenarios in my mind. And then I said, you know, that's, that's that, you know, I need, to, I need to rethink the way I work and I want to spend more time with my family and not, you know, I want to do that and not just to spend time working because at the end of the day, I don't want to be on my deathbed and saying that, you know, I wish I spent more time with my family. And so in 2015, we decided to do a small little experiment. We went on a 40-day road trip in Italy and... Uh, and France just to give our children um, some kind of an idea of traveling uh, over a longer period of time so you need to understand that in Singapore uh, many people travel when they travel it's usually a two weeks uh, a vacation so 40 day is a long time for most people and so when we did that uh, we, we realized that you know the amount of um, experiences and the then the things that our children learn is tremendous. All right? It's something that you know, no preschool and no books and not even the internet will be able to provide that. And so in 2016, my wife and I decided that you know, that's it. I finished up all my contracts with the school and we said that that's it. I'm going to take on whatever contract that I can and I'm going to do it remotely. Uh, and if they can't do it remotely, we were just going to terminate the contract. And so there were a few schools who decided that they want to continue the relationship with me, uh, even doing the work, you know, remotely. Uh, and, and so that's, that, that's what happened. And so we solved literally everything we have in Singapore. And we decided to go on a one-year uh, travel adventure, at least in Europe and U.S., and so here I am, uh, right now I'm uh, at Lubbock in uh, Texas, United States. Um, and we'll be here since December. I mean, we've been here in the U.S. since December. Uh, so we started off in September. We left uh, Singapore on September 12th. We went to, to London for 10 days. And then we went into, um, we flew to Vienna. And that's where we stayed for uh, close to three months. And over that, that time period, we have visited so many places. We've been to Munich, we've been to Zurich, we went to Budapest, we went to Salzburg, we went to, you know, um, uh, Innsbruck, we went to Prague, uh, and, and many other places that we went to. Yeah. Um, and what's amazing was that, you know, my children get to experience um, the different kind of art, the different kind of culture so they've been to ballets they've watched an opera they have even participated in a ballet camp for example uh, they have done a hiking in the swiss alps um, you know we have been to the canyon in the united states uh, you know we've been to white sands uh, they play with snow in finland so you know, I like, for example, today we just went to the ranch, a traditional ranch, a heritage ranch here in Lubbock. And so the kind of experience that they have has kind of stretched their minds in, you know, more than one ways, more, more ways than you can imagine. And the thing is with our minds is, is that, you know, our minds are just like rubber bands. So once it's being stretched, you know, it, can, it will not go back to its original form. So the thing with us is that we want to give our children that experience of a lifetime whereby they were able to kind of experience all these things, you know, not just uh, through reading of books or watching of videos on the internet, but truly to be able to experience it firsthand. So for example, when, uh, when they learn about Mozart, we actually brought them to see, you know, the, 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 the Mozart statue. When they learn about Strauss, we actually went to Johann Strauss uh, uh, museum and his apartment, for example, you know when we when we learned about uh, Andre Mottes, but uh, Mottes, you know we actually went to the exhibition and see his art, you know, there and there, yeah. So to for them to not just see it, but to be able to experience it, to be able to smell it, to be able to see that you know I've been there, I've seen it, yeah, and that's a big deal for us. 
And so during this one year travel, one of the key challenges that I kind of set myself was to be able to establish uh, multiple businesses that will be able to give me multiple income streams or a business that is able to give me multiple income streams that will give me the freedom of location, intellectual, financial, as well as time. So I don't want to be bogged down to any one place, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, if I do, if I do decide to settle on a particular place, that because that's because it's a choice I've made. Yeah, and when it comes to intellectual, you know, I I've been enjoying the freedom of doing what I love and doing what I want to do and doing what I'm good at for the last fourteen years. That's the last thing I want to give up. So the intellectual part, and of course the financially, you know, I want to do something that it's uh, financially rewarding. It doesn't mean that you know I have to be a multi millionaire or billionaire, but at least at this point, you know, I want to be able to say that well, money is taken care of, and you know, we are able to live the way we want to. We are able to choose our lifestyle, and of course, lastly, it's time. You know, I don't want to be bogged now by, you know, I need to put in X number of hours, and because I put in X number of hours, I get paid that much. So you know, I want to run away from that from that billable hours thingy. And so, at the end of the day, truly, the thing is not just to, you know, to be extremely rich uh, and to have, you know, uh, to to be just financially well to do. Of course, that is important, but that's not the key thing. The key thing for me really is to be able to to do something that I believe that that's my purpose in life. And so, if you ask me what's my purpose in life, my purpose in life is not just for me. Not just to serve others, but to me, truly, is to be able to extend what God wants us all to do. And so, for me personally, my personal purpose is really to talk about, you know, to be able to help people multiply their talent. Because I believe that at the end of the day, we are all asked to be asked to give an account of how we have used our life and used the talents that have been given to us. So, like the parable of the talent, you know, the master is going to come back and say, "Well, I've given you one talent. What have you done to it? I've given you two talents. What have you done to it?" And so, my my purpose is to help as many people as I can to be able to multiply their talent, and that's what I want to be able to do. And that's the thing that I'm doing right now. That it's giving me the drive. And so, I'm not just driven by you know what people think. You know, it's. Uh, I'm not driven by approval of others. I'm not driven by fear. I'm not driven by guilt. I'm not driven by just financial rewards. And lastly, I'm not just driven by you know my my ego. At the end of the day, I'm driven by my purpose, and that purpose I believe had been given to me to to do God's will, and that is to be able to help others multiply and help. So that's it. That's mine. Backstory, and so I just want to give you that uh, that part about my backstory, so at least you get to know me and you know where I'm coming from, what's my worldview, what's my perspective. And so in the uh, series going forward here, what I want like to do is I like to reset my uh, series of uh, videos because I've done a couple. Of videos, I've done at least up to 29 videos already. Um, but I've kind of jumped about, and I've kind of not settled at you know what might be the key thing. So moving forward, I think the three things that I would like to focus on, of course, you know, one is um, uh, one is basically my perspective of things, because I believe that uh, through my exploration, through my experience. Uh, both as an entrepreneur then, and as well as an entrepreneur now, and also my experience with you know traveling, for example, um, I have a I have an interesting perspective that I like to share with you, yeah, and maybe you can uh, you can gain a thing from do uh, or two from there. So perspective, that's one. The other thing is that I like to share with you the process that I use and the process that I have to kind of get things done. So that could kind of help you to be able to make yourself a lot more productive. And lastly, I like to talk about the projects that I'm I'm working on, so that you know you have an idea of you know what kind of projects I'm doing that's aligned to my purpose. My name is Melvin, and I thank.